Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen and we're going to jump right into it. Today we're going to be talking about Italian light and medium tanks from the World War II era. First up we're going to talk about the L640. This came about in 1940, thus the 40. It's basically a six ton light tank and this is the Italeray kit, which is also marketed and put out by Tamir as well. I guess Tamir is helping to distribute these as well under their name. The Tamir one comes with a couple of figures, the Italeray one does not. This is the Italeray one. Let's see, so it has a, a bit of an interior to it, so there is a transmission under here. There's a little bit of gun detail. Not a lot, but there's something to look at. So if you poke inside, you can you can see some stuff. It's got a length and length track, and as you can see, the hatches have a lot of options for opening them. And this one, I kind of opened most of them, although the, the turret top hatch lacks good in inside details. So I decided to close that one up. I don't know why they were a little weak on that aspect of this kit but it definitely needs latches or handles or something because it's pretty barren there. Though the rest of the detail is quite nice, so go figure. Um, here I have the, the Tamiya Italo Ray instruction sheet. And as you can see, this has got two figures, which is included with their version, again, not with this one. And just for a size comparison here, the Italian infantrymen, give you a sense of just how tiny this vehicle is. Very cramped, very small. So as World War II erupted in 1939, Italy was basically, other than using some old derivatives of the Renault FT-17 tank, they were using a number of Fiat and Saldo light uh, tankettes, which were basically armed with twin machine guns and a casemate and some eventually had flamethrowers put in them, but they were even smaller and um, of less um, combat use than this. So this was armed with a 20 millimeter cannon and a 68 horsepower Fiat engine, maximum speed of uh, 42 kilometers an hour. And it had about 296 rounds and eight round clips for the 20 millimeter cannon. And initially, they initially ordered 583 of these, but the turret here, as you can see, this, this turret was also being used by the AB41 armored car, which in reality was a much better vehicle than this tank was, so priority went to the armored car. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is the AB40 armored car here. And the initial models of the L640, the uh, prototypes had this turret, which is instead of the 20 millimeter gun, it has twin uh, 8 millimeter machine guns. So this is the AB40 armored car. Not too many of these were made because they went to the AB41, which had this turret with a 20 millimeter cannon, which was better than just the twin machine guns. This is sort of Panzer 1 ish shall we say. So these ended up, as you can see here, they were converted to be able to use on railways. I mean, they kept the wheels as well, so they could go either, either back on the road or back on the railroad either way. So again, it's the AB40 armored car. They, AB40s ended up being used primarily in this role and the railway uh, protection lines throughout uh, Italian occupied Yugoslavia, such as like parts of Croatia and Slovenia. So that's what that is. So that turret was originally on this, but then they upgunned it to the 20 millimeter. So they were going to build 583 of these, but they also realized that this just did not uh, have the accurate firepower or or the armor protection, which let's see, the armor protection was what. Uh, 30 millimeter thick armor plates, 
riveted, and so it didn't really have the best um, performance. So what they did is they stopped production of this in favor of this here, which is the yeah, no, that's better book. But this is the all right, the Semivente L40 um, self-propelled gun with a 47 millimeter cannon, so it has better firepower. But again, cramped. This is the Italaray kit, North African markings. As you can see, there's quite a bit of interior detail on this one. And you can really see just how cramped that is. Basically, a lot of the same kit parts, just open casemate. You know, it's got the uh, folded back cloth covering, which could cover this in case of inclement weather, such as it is. <laughs> um, so again, a 47 millimeter cannon in there which was better, but by the time this thing rolled out, even this wasn't really up to snuff anymore. So these were sent to North Africa and like Tunisia, and by the time these were entering combat, you know, they were up against, well, versions of the Sherman, this is a later version, this is the M4A3 Sherman tank, so let me give you again a size comparison here. Like these things were up against that. While a 47 millimeter could penetrate the armor, but it would have to get pretty close to do so. I mean, again, that's a Sherman, you know, 75 millimeter cannon, you know, 47 millimeter cannon. So it's not mm, the best, <laughs> the best chances here. And then the British had, you know, for example, they had uh, the Valentine tank here. I mean, this is a later version, but still, you get the idea. You know, much bigger, bigger vehicles. You know, compared with this. You know, much bigger guns. But it didn't mean that the Italians did not have medium tanks, which they did. So let's talk about those. I got a couple books here that are helpful. You know, the Italian light tanks, which is a good one, which talks about the L40 and the uh, their version of the FT17, which was used as well early. And here's the uh, CV33 light. Um, tankettes that they were using. I was just talking about that. Including the flamethrower one at the bottom. Uh, there are models of those available now as well. And then of course the L640. One thing that's scary is that the L640 was also sent to the Russian front. Now imagine this going up just against some of the Russian tanks, like the T-34, it would have been pretty much suicide using this against a tank like that. But that's the largest size tank in Italy sent to the Russian front. Let's see if there's anything else in here before I switch on to the other book. And then you can see the, uh, the Semivente L-40 in combat in North Africa. All right, so the medium tanks are the M1340, M1441 series. As you can see here, the top one was the original M1139, which had a 37 millimeter gun mounted in the front, and then eight mil machine guns in the turret, and then they moved on to the, the M1340. It showed up in 1941. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay. 
So we have the M1340. And one of the main characteristics of the M1340 is that it has only these short fenders. And the rest of it is just exposed track here. This is the old uh, Tamiya kit. I built this a number of years ago. So it's a fun model. It's a basic model here. This is in the European green color. With a white air addition disc on it. So this is the old Tamiya one, which is I still think is a fun kit. The recent reissues have changed the rubber tracks with a length and length, which is a little more realistic than this one. Although for kids, this is probably the easier one to do. And this is this one was rather kid friendly because I remember building this as a actually you know I got the one I built as a kid which I ended up re <laughs> I'll show you this one I built as a kid and ended up repainting it later on as an adult. This is the full uh, fenders, so this could be an M fourteen forty one. There's been some debate as to what exactly the uh, the Tamiya and the Atelier kits really are, and I'll give you a, I'll give you a peek at some of these kits. So here's the if you buy the Atelier version, you get this fun book with the uh, L640 which has quite a bit of history in it. You know, the original blueprint photos and photos from the uh, tank museum over in uh, Russia, the Kubinka. So once captured by Russia. So that has quite a bit of fun material. Then it talks about the decal options you have, which I believe both uh, yeah, the Tamiya, both, both Tamiya and the Italian, both, both boxings will give you the same decals. Um, again, this is all the L640 kit. You know, a couple of these are here with the, uh, the Italian forces in Yugoslavia, probably Croatia or Slovenia. Is the one from uh, that I did here. Is one in Russia. And here's one that was captured and used by the Germans. The Germans did use quite a bit of these vehicles after the Italian capitulation in um, 1943, so a lot of these did go into German use. And again, here's the uh, the Tamiya Italore boxing of it, of this kit. Of course, it looks enormous when you see this this picture here. It looks like it's gonna be a big tank model, although there is a hint but by the, looking at the figures that this is gonna be very tiny, but the box makes it makes you think, wow, it's gonna be a huge kit. Uh, not so much. And then there's the box here for the uh, the Semivente L40-4732. I'll give you a quick look inside. Yeah, it's the Italoray version. And it's got a few for for Sicily. Corsica. The Italians put a lot of forces in Corsica because they really believed, and the Allies certainly fueled this this belief that that was going to be the target of the invasion instead of Sicily. I just want to give you a quick look at. Yeah, you know, there's a lot to to it. It does look kind of frightening when you look at the Italian version of the instructions, but it's definitely not kid friendly. But it's you know. It's a fun one to do. And then of course there's one here, German use. This is in Northern Italy fighting the partisans at the end of the war. And just a quick look at the parts. There are quite a bit really, but again, not horrible to assemble. The tough part again is, is painting all those interior pieces because there's a lot of interior and that one. Lots, lots to work on in the inside. 
Okay, so getting back to the M1340, M1441 debate. So this is the newest uh, reissue by Italare. This is a nice one because it also has uh, a box of infantry men that come along with it. And we've got a quite a number of uh, decal options, but they're all of the, uh, I think they're all North African. Well, maybe not. I think there's one. Yeah, nice set of decals here. All the figures, I've got one of them. I showed you a minute ago, whoops, it's purple. This is one of them here, which I've done in the European paint job, but you could do them in tan, North Africa. Yeah, so they have North Africa, North Africa, and they've got a Northern Italian, uh, part of Mussolini's puppet uh, government as well, all in desert sand. So, again, the question being, it's the same, same old kit, so it's probably the M1440, M1340 question, I don't, as to which is which, that's been debated for a while. Anyway, moving along, I don't want to keep you guys on looking at this forever, but I just want to move on to the one last thing here, and that is the uh, Semovente 7518. And so, again, with the M1340 tank and M1441, and then the other derivative of the, the M1542, they're all armed with that same 47 millimeter cannon, which is also in and this. And while that was not a bad gun in, say, 1942, but it became outdated rather quickly. And the Italians were kind of figuring that out as the war was going on in North Africa, that this was starting to become outdated. And they quickly jumped into this. By 1941, they were working on this design. So this had a 75 millimeter field cannon in an enclosed casemate, basically an early you know assault gun variant, and this turned out to be a pretty effective weapon. So this was able to, to deal with those bigger tanks I just showed you, the Shermans, the Valentines, the Grants, it's the Lee tanks, etc., the Stuarts that were showing up by the Allies, and this could be a real headache to those tanks. Again, you know, a nice assault gun design, squat, good gun, decent armor plating. These were popular. And these were also popular with the Germans when they were able to confiscate them from the Italians after the surrender. And in some cases they were loaned to uh, like uh, German airborne units even in North Africa. So these were pretty good. And there were other variants of this with different cannons, which I believe Italare is now putting out one, again, with, with Tamiya's help, that has a longer 75 millimeter gun. This is the Tamiya version, the original Tamiya version. This is not an Italare version. So I built this one a number of years ago. Again, it's got the rubber tracks, although with the fenders, it's not so bad. I don't think they're terrible, though detail would be better in the length and length where you can see, see better track detail. But anyway, this this was a really fun kit to build. I built this a long time ago. I repainted it in recent years, but this was actually a lot of fun. Anyway, that's a very quick run through on Italian light and medium tanks. And lately, um, the last maybe 10 years, I guess, um, Italare and some other companies have been really working on putting out the Italian uh, inventory basically of tanks because Italy did have a number of different designs as you can see here there's quite a few um, right here but you know there's all the uh, L333 etc all those little uh, tankettes are now available there's a whole series of armored cars that Italare is doing I mean this is the AB40 but there's the 41 and there's a 43 so there's a bunch of those and 
these are fun to build. I mean, that was great fun to put together. I, I can't lie. Um, so I'm looking forward to working on their other armored cars. And it's one that's got an open interior with an anti-aircraft gun in it. So there's a lot of really neat stuff out there. Uh, if you like Italian armor, it's fun to work on. And if you're one of those people that are not thrilled with working with Italy, and for some reason a lot of model builders are not big fans of working with like stuff from Italy or France, unless they could put a German marking on it and call it, now it's a German vehicle. I'm not sure what that's about, but that is a big issue with people that are buying models. Um, they like it either German or American. Hey, whatever sells. It was to the point, this is just a quick aside, it was a point where uh, Heller models that made a series of French tanks like the Samoa uh, S35, the Renault R35, and the Hotchkiss uh, H35. 38.9 but they began boxing those with box art just showing the captured German versions to sell them I guess it just sells better if it has a giant German cross on it go figure but they've been doing that with the new um, ICM models is putting out the FCM 36 tank and they're also putting it captured German version which is probably going to sell better hey go figure Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, so yeah, there's another series of tanks. If you like Italy, try them out. All right, we'll see you soon.